Hello everyone. Welcome to Amasafti webcast. In this video, we will learn the steps on how to configure an FTP server with user isolation on Windows Server 2019. FTP user isolation allows us to restrict access of many users to their own folders on a FTP server. With user isolation, users can work only with their folders and can't go up in the FTP directory tree. Thus, the access to the data of other users on the FTP server can be prevented. For this demo, we are using the Taste Lab created in VirtualBox. This is our Windows Server 2019 virtual machine with the name WS2K19. And this server is a part of a workgroup. For the testing purpose, we will install and configure FTP server role on this server. First, we will create users and groups for this demo. For that, I'm going to open Computer Management Console. Let's click on Tools and select Computer Management. On Computer Management Console, I'm going to click on Local Users and Groups and then after I'm going to click on Users. Let's right click in a free area and select New User. Let's create User with the name a User1 and let's assign a password and then after we need to click on a Create. Let's create one more user account with the name user2. Let's click on create and click on close. As we can see, we have successfully created two users with the name user1 and user2. Now I'm going to click on groups. Let's right click in a free area and select new group. Let's give group name have to be users. And at the same time, we want to add both users which we have created earlier to this group and that's why I'm going to click on add button, click on advance, click on find now and select our both users user1 and user2. Click on ok and click on ok. Perfect. Let's click on create and click on close. We can verify that our security group has been created successfully with the name aptp users and if we double click on it under properties, under members tab, we can verify that user1 and user2, both users are member of our FTP users group. Let's click on OK and let's close computer management console. In the next step, we will install FTP service on Windows Server 2019. For that, I'm going to click on manage and I'm going to select add roles and features. On before you begin screen, I'm going to click on next. Select Rule Base or Future Base Installation and click Next. On Select a Destination Server, select the server where you are planning to install FTP service. In our case, we have only one server and that is our local server. So select it and click on Next. On Select Server Rules, I'm going to select a web server. Let's select the checkbox, click on Add Features and click on Next. Next again, Next again. On select rule services, I'm going to select FTP service. So let's select FTP service checkbox. Click on next and click on install. Perfect. FTP service has been successfully installed on our server. Let's click on close. After installation, our next step is to configure FTP service. And for that, we need to open Internet Information Services Manager Console. To do so, on the Server Manager Console, we need to click on Tools. And then after, we need to click on Internet Information Services Manager. Let's maximize the console. And I'm going to click on our local server name, which is WS2K19. Let's expand it. And let's click on Sites. Here we can see we have our default website listed. To create a new FTP site, we need to right click on sites and then after I'm going to click on add FTP site. Under FTP site name, enter the FTP site name of your choice. Under content directory, we need to specify the physical path of the FTP root directory. For that, I'm going to click on these three dots, expand C drive, Expand inet pub and I'm going to select FTP root directory. Let's click on OK. So you can choose any other path as well. But to keep this video short and simple, I'm going to select the default FTP root directory. Let's click on Next. 
under IP address, select all assigned unless you want to use a specific IP. In that case, click on drop down box and select your desired IP address. You can also change the FTP service port which is uh, TCP21 by default. We don't have any SSL certificate and that's why I'm going to select no SSL radio button. If you click on this drop down menu, you will see all assigned IP addresses on your FTP server. Let's click on next. On this console, we can configure authentication and authorization with FTP site permission. But at this point, I'm only going to enable basic authentication. Leave other options to default. We will configure it later on. Simply, we need to click on finish at this time. Perfect. Our FTP site has been successfully created. After creating FTP site, in the next step, we will set up folders for FTP users with permission under FTP root directory. And for that, we need to open File Explorer. Let's double click on a C drive, double click on inetpub, and double click on FTP root. Okay, as you can see, this folder is empty. Let's go back and right click on FTP root directory as we want to assign read and write permission to FTP users group. Now select properties, click on security, click on edit and click on add button. Select our group which is FTP users in our case. Click on OK and give them modify permission. Fine. Click on apply, click on OK and click on OK. So now we have successfully configured NTFS permission on FTP root directory. After assigning permission, we need to create one folder under FTP root directory. Remember the folder name must be same, it is very important. Let's right click in a free area, select new and select folder. Let's give folder name local user. See, for this demo, we are using Windows Server 2019 computer, which is part of workgroup. But suppose if your server is Active Directory Domain Controller or a member server, that time you need to create folder with the name of your domain. Let's double click on this folder and under local user folder, we need to create folders with the user's login name. In our case, our FTV users username is user1 and user2 and that's why I'm going to create two folders with the same name. Let's right click here, select new and select folder. User1 and our second user's username is user2. Now suppose if you have a 10 users, at the time you need to create 10 folders under a local users directory and you have to assign the same name as your user's login name. So in our case, a user's login name are user1 and user2. Fine. So after configuring permissions and creating directories, in the next step, we will configure FTP user isolation for our FTP site. Let's minimize this console and let's go back to IIS manage console. Let's expand our sites and then after I'm going to click on our FTP site which is my lab FTP site. First of all, we are going to create FTP authorization rule because we haven't created any rule for FTP authorization. For that, I'm going to double click on FTP authorization. As you can see, this list is empty. To create a new rule, we need to click on add allow rule. I'm going to select the radio button, specified rules or user group. Under this, we need to specify the name of our group, which is FTP users in our case. We want to assign a read and a write permission as well. Let's click on OK. And suppose if you want to create another add rule, that time simply you need to click on add allow rule again and specify the desired permission or you can specify a particular users as well. Let's again click on our FTP site name. After creating authorization rule, now we are going to configure FTP user isolation settings. For that, 
we need to double click on FTP user isolation. By default, FTP user isolation is not configured. And that's why you can see this radio button is selected. Do not isolate users. Start users in FTP root directory. Under isolate users, select the options as per your requirement. For the purpose of this video demonstration, I'm going to select the radio button, username physical directory, enable global virtual directories. Now what exactly this option means? Username physical directory suggests that the FTP session of a user is isolated in physical directory that has the same name as the name of the FTP user account. And that's the reason why we have created folders with user's logon name like user1 and user2. An FTP user cannot go above its directory. However, all created global virtual directories are available to the user. You can also select FTP home directory configured in active directory options as well. For an FTP user is isolated within his home directory specified in the settings of his active directory account. But for this video, we are using workgroup server and that's why we are not going to select that radio button. After selecting the option, we simply need to click on this apply button. Okay, we are getting message that the changes have been successfully saved. One more thing which I forgot to mention, uh, when you install the FTP server rule, all necessary rules that are needed for users to access FTP sites are automatically activated in the Windows firewall settings. So you don't need to create or modify firewall rules for FTP site access. At this point, we have completed all required steps for FTP user isolation. Now it's time to test the configuration. To test our FTP site, I'm going to open File Explorer. Let's click on File Explorer and let's specify the URL to access our FTP site, which is FTP call and double slash 172.18.72.5, which is the IP address of our server. And now we need to press enter key. It will ask us to provide the username, which is user one in our case. Let's specify the password and click on log on. Perfect. User one is successfully able to access FTP site. But right now, as you can see, this folder is empty. And that's why we are going to create one folder under it. Let's give name user one data. And let's verify the same thing under our FTP directory, let's double click on user one's folder. And here we can verify that user one data is there. This folder is there, which is currently user one is accessing. Now to verify that FTP user isolation is working properly, we need to access our FTP site again with the credential of our user two. And user two must be not able to see user one data folder. So let's close this. And uh, let me close this as well. And let's again uh, access File Explorer. Let's again access our FTP site. And this time I'm going to provide the credential of our second user, which is user two. Let's specify the password and click on log on. Okay, and as you can see, this folder is empty. So user two is not able to see the data of user one. And let's create one more folder here. Uh, let me cancel it. We need to create folder here. User2 data. Fine. Now let's go back to user2 directory. And here we can verify that that folder is there. User2 data. So whenever user1 is accessing FTP site, that time he is accessing this directory. And whenever user2 is accessing FTP site, he is accessing user2 directory. That means FTP user isolation is working successfully on Windows Server 2019. So this is the way how you can configure FTP user isolation on Windows Server 2019 FTP server. That's it for this video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video.